This is the uh, second lab for this course. Uh, it's called Electrochemical Cells, and we're going to be going through the uh, Millennium 2 net safety uh, gas detection over here. This is our gas detection trainer. Uh, we have multiples of these, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to demonstrate. This is an online lab, so we're going to I'm going to demonstrate some things for you so you uh, can see how this all operates, and we're going to ask you some questions. So uh, you can see the way that this is broken out here. We've got um, some of our for our this is our detronics gas detection system over here which we're going to be working with in our second lab um, but you can see how we have all of these banana jacks here broken out and they are basically if we were to take the um, explosion proof housing off of our net safety controller here um, all of the all of the wiring and stuff in the back there has been broken out here so it's easy for us to connect up um, and take advantage of like there's some stuff for four to twenty milliamps and uh the power to the to the unit um the sensors we have one sensor up here uh you can see for the sensors there's wiring that runs up through this conduit and the purple banana banana jacks right here are coming from the sensor or sorry from the from the controller so this is all purple up here it's all coming from down here and these uh, connectors right here are color coded to the wires from the the sensor in the uh, the, uh, the net safety sensor. I'm not going to tell you which sensor is which. Uh, we've got them mounted appropriately, one up high and one down low, and um, it's going to be part of one of the questions in the lab: which one, which one is the one that we're using? Um, and then down here, you can see the other one is, is set up the same way: purple heads up to the controller and the uh the colored the colored ones here are the uh, same color as the the wires on the sensor uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of the hardware that we're working with today um now we'll have a look over here um next at the equipment that we use to calibrate this so in front of us we have our calibration equipment that we're going to be using for calibrating the electrochemical cell or the cell used for measuring uh our h2s here's the hydrogen sulfide or h2s calibration gas it's at a concentration of 10 ppm which is which is fairly low especially at the flow rates we're going to be using so um, hydrogen sulfide is toxic it can kill you but at uh, low concentrations like this uh, and the amount of time that we're going to be using it, it shouldn't be a concern um, right here's the regulator that we're going to be using it just screws onto the top of the bottle here and in these uh, bottles can be compressed up to about, I don't know, 1,000, 2,000 PSI in the bottle. And this is going to reduce the pressure down. Um, and then we're just going to have a low flow rate. And the manual says the flow rate that we're supposed to use for the sensors. And that's something that you're going to have to look up and find out what that value is. Um, the uh, There is a, a flow restrictor here. It's just on the, this guy right here. And it's got a small orifice in it. And so if the regulator did ever fail, it would prevent uh, having the flow, the full flow that we would get through a, a quarter inch fitting here. Um, and that also is kind of a safety measure there too. So we've, we've incorporated, we've used, we're using a low calibration gas here and we're also using, uh, we also have this flow restrictor on here. Those are two things that are gonna prevent that, um, uh, reduce or control the hazard that we have of the uh, toxic gas. Um, if we move over here now, this, all this uh, white plastic tubing here uh, is connected up to our instrument air here and uh, we're going to be increasing the pressure on this gauge. So this is, this is a regulator on the side of the bench here. We're going to, uh, we thread that in and it's going to allow gas to flow out and it'll regulate the pressure here. Uh, we only need about five PSI probably. So that'll also eliminate or not eliminate, but reduce our hazard, um, our pressure hazard here of compressed air that we're going to be working with. So it's going to flow out and over here to a, a flow meter right here. And this flow meter we're going to use for both the, the uh, uh, H2S and for the, uh, the zero error, or the error that we're gonna use here for, for zeroing the meter. Um, and there's a certain flow rate that we need to have that set to. So this, is, this here is going to be, it's somewhere, the flow rate is somewhere in between zero and 2.5 liters per minute. So um, that's the question they're gonna be asking, like I said before in the lab. So this, this flow meter needs to be vertical because there's a little ball in there. It's a variable area meter, a rotameter. And as we increase the flow of air, it's going to lift the ball up. And then we take a reading to make sure that we have the correct flow rate. 
So the air comes in the back side here, you can see, and goes up to the bottom and then up through the top and then exits out the top. And we've got our, our quick, connecting, quick connect fitting here um, that then exits out the top and comes down and around and it goes over here to our calibration cup. So this calibration cup just fits onto either the top sensor or the bottom sensor and then allows us to uh, expose them to either the zero air or the the uh, the uh, H2S that we have here, the hydrogen salt. So I just want to show you how this fits onto the, the calibration cup fits onto the uh, the top sensor here. You can see there's, a, there's an O-ring in here to kind of help uh, prevent the gas from just leaking out and around the sensor and it just kind of clips on there and uh, what I can go ahead and do now is I'll take you over around and we'll we'll uh, get some instrument. There you can see that it's ran out through the variable area meter and then up and over to our top sensor there and what I'll do is I'll increase the pressure here and we should see this gauge pop up to about 5 psi. So there are about 5 psi and if we go over here to our variable area meter it's kind of it's Important to have this shut here when we start this, just because if we have it fully open, it'll fire the ball right to the top quite quickly. But I'll just open this here and we'll raise it up. We'll go up to 2.5 liters per minute. We wanna make sure that that ball is in the center of the line, just like that. And so we have 2.5 liters per minute of instrument air flowing up and over to that sensor right now. All right, so now when I, um, when I wanna uh, run the, uh, the toxic gas through, here, the, the H2S, uh, we can just remove this. We can even leave the pressure on here, you can see because these val uh, quick connect fittings have a valve in them, we can release, just pop them out like that. And then I can take the, the fitting off and then connect it into our regulator and put it on our, our calibration gas bottle here and introduce 10 ppm H2S to the sensor. All right, so now you can see I've removed the, the tubing and connected it to the regulator here. And I've threaded this onto the top of the calibration gas. Uh, just needs to be hand tight and if we have a look here on the gauge you can see it's reading 900 psi there in black and all i have to do is i just push down on this i push down and then twist and it will start flowing gas once i have it to on we should now be flowing gas and um, it'll be flowing out and over here to our our variable area meter i do actually i have this shut right now but once i open it you can see we have gas flow. So um, you can see that I can go close to that. This uh, limiter right here is limiters limiter, limiting us to uh, about 2.5 liters per minute. And that shows right here, you can see I can't get it to go much higher. The ball wants to fl fall back down. So we would do the same thing here. We would set this to the correct flow rate. Um, and I'm just putting it to the high end. There is a, it's a value that you have to look up in your manuals. And now we would have that flowing out into our sensor right now when we need to do the calibration. Um, and then when we're all done, we would shut this off, just turn it to the, uh, to the off position. And you can, it kind of is loose and it kind of fell into position there. And now if we look over here, you can see that the, the gas is no longer flowing. So we don't have any gas flowing in this line. Um, and when we're done with the bottle, we would then just thread this off. Um, normally in the lab we don't take this off till the very end just because when you do thread this off there's a little puff of gas that's trapped in here. Um, so we would want to uh, we'd want to avoid right, that. So the next step is we're going to get this wired up so we can uh, check that it's reading correctly and calibrate it. The, um, I've connected the, the uh, wires here for 24 volt DC power. Uh, they're just connected over here on our bench here. This switch here will turn it on. Um, I have it turned off right now because I'm going to go ahead and wire up one of the two sensors, the correct one for measuring H2S. And as I showed you before, these wires need to be connected down to the sensor. And so that's what we have over here hung is we've got the wires to make those connections properly. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the correct one. And then we're mostly going to be working right here with the controller and uh, introducing gases and, and calibrating it and confirming that it's reading All right, correctly. So right now I have the, uh, the unit powered on now. I've got the sensor wired up and you can see you're reading zero PPM here. Uh, and the other sensor is disabled right now, so we're not using it. Uh, back over at the, uh, uh, we've, got, we've got instrument air flowing across the sensor right now and it's set to the correct flow rate. So everything looks good. We're, now we're gonna check, I wanna check to see what it's reading when we introduce um, 10 PPM 
H2S. I want to see we, these, this unit probably hasn't been calibrated in over a year, and that's long past due for calibration. We'll see if it's the sensors drifted at all or anything. All right, so I've just introduced uh, our 10 ppm H2S, and you can see it's coming up. Um, it's probably been about 30 seconds, and it's up to 9 ppm right now. Uh, maybe wait just a couple more seconds here. We'll just see if it hits 10, uh, and then after we'll do a calibration. Um, so it responded fairly quickly. Just kind of gives you an idea of how fast it responds. And looks like we're pretty well leveled out at nine. And what I'll do now is we'll go ahead and do a calibration. All right, so I have removed the explosion proof cover here. Uh, it's important that if we were doing this out in industry that we don't want to do that unless we ensure that the atmosphere uh, doesn't contain an explosive mix where we could have um, an explosion. So I just wanted to point that out. I removed it for ease of use, but we would want to be checking the area with a monitor just to make sure that it was, it was safe to do so. So I wanted to point that out as a hazard. All right, so uh, the lab does say we want to have channel one disabled and channel two enabled. Um, you can see that's uh, the way it's set up right now. One other thing that we want to check to do is we want to make sure that the, uh, so I push button one here, enter the main menu, we click one again to say yes. And then now we're going to scroll down and we want to make sure that the range is set correctly. So the sensor upper limit or range there needs to be set for 20 because that's what our sensor is set up for. It's configured for 20 ppm. So now I'm just going to exit here. And what we're going to do is uh, perform a calibration. All right, so for performing our calibration, we just click the button here, enter the main menu again. And when it asks you to calibrate the sensor, we press enter and it's going to ask us which sensor we want to do uh, sensor two because we have channel two enabled channel one is disabled so i'll press enter and uh, we click calibrate the sensor yes or no we go yes and it says to apply clean air so i have clean air flowing to the sensor now i just need to uh, press button one i believe again and there so now, it's now that we've confirmed that we have air flowing to it, I went and checked there was a flow on the meter and now it's setting the zero. So now it just popped up and it said apply 10 ppm gas. So I'm gonna go ahead and do All that. All right, so I didn't introduce the 10 ppm gas, it picked it up. You can see that it's, uh, the, the reading is, is climbing and then it says that it is spanning right now. So I just started doing this on its own. I didn't have to press any buttons. And you can see it looks like it's stabilizing at 9 ppm again, and we'll see. Um, it should tell us when the calibration is complete. Uh, it just popped up. It said remove cal gas. So it was happy. Everything must have been stable in the electronics, and it said, okay, calibration's good. So now we got to remove the calibration. Remove the calibration gas, and I'm applying uh, clean, clean air again here. Um, and that should bring, that should bring the, the reading back down. And we'll just see, we'll wait and see if it gives us any more instruction here. So there it says cal complete. Uh, so now the calibration is complete and we should be able to press button one here. And uh, no, we don't want to go back. Uh, so we'll just have to wait here and see it should start reading a value for us. So there, after about a minute, uh, our zero PPM reading came back up and it's back to normal operation. All right, so we're gonna do a little troubleshooting exercise. Uh, the sensor, we have a sensor communication fault and we're gonna have a peek here at our wiring and check to see if there's any issues with it. All right, so I've brought you in close to our sensor here. Let's have a look here, just look at, have a look at the wiring you can see right here and the labels there. The purple is the top coming from the controller and the color is coming from the sensor. So just have a look at those wires and this is going to be part of the lab to answer if it is wired correctly. Last part of this lab, we need to set the uh, sensor back to 100. So if I go down to sensor range limit and we're going to change channel two back to 100 and exit and we're back to the main screen. So we're good to go for the next lab group.